The substance of God is never depleted. It's never depleted. So if the substance of God is never depleted, why should your wallet be? Why should your bank account be? Why should you be walking around here sad and thinking that you don't have enough to make it when you can simply say, Greetings, beautiful ones. Fran here, back with another video. Before I go any further, I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for vibing with me on the channel. If you're new to Fran's fam, welcome. We're glad to have you. If you are returning Fran's fam member, you know I'm always glad to see you. All right, so on this channel, my purpose is to raise consciousness and change mindsets one video at a time and one mindset at a time. And if that vibes with you, stick around and let's do some work. All right, so... Uh, Today, I want to talk about a conversation that I had with a client of mine that lives in Florida. And um, we were on the phone and we were talking about material abundance, right? So a lot of times, I think that depending what your upbringing is and where you come from, material abundance does not sit right with you right? You feel like you should not be asking God for material abundance. And uh, as he and I were talking, he was saying, you know, God is so good to me all the time and he's constantly blessing my life, but I struggle with asking him for material abundance or more wealth, right? And uh, I thought to myself, hmm, I remember those days. I remember those days of you know, being told that you don't ask God for money and it's better to be poor and et cetera, et cetera. But we know better now, right? Because we have thought and we have learned that that is just absolutely not true. But he still is in that realm of, should I be asking God for material things? Should I be asking God for money? And I really love having these conversations because I too came from that place of struggle, work hard, you better work hard, don't be asking God for no money, it don't matter, you better just be broke and be poor and be happy. Like, who's poor, broke, and happy? Like, I don't know anybody who is poor, broke, and happy. They may tell you they are, but nine times out of 10, they're not because sometimes when you are not financially fit, you are doing without your necessities and nobody should be doing without their necessities. You should not be doing without your necessities, but you should also not be doing without the desires of your heart. So I said to him, I said, you know, I used to be like that, right? Until I started diving deep into this prosperity lifestyle and living intentionally. And one of the biggest things that I learned that stuck with me was it is God's good pleasure to prosper me. And when I could not remember any other scripture from the Bible, right? And I was going through it, like going through it. Your girl did not even know how she was going to pay her rent. She didn't know how she was going to pay her car note. If she was gonna get up in the morning and the car was gonna be there, I know y'all trying to act like, oh, we've never had that happen. Oh my gosh, Fran, we, we've never had that. Yeah, sure, okay, but maybe you haven't. Maybe you haven't, but I'm sure you know somebody who has hit their car or has been scared because you think you're gonna get up in the morning and your car gonna be gone. Okay, I have lived in that scarcity mentality because in all reality, that is a scarcity mentality. And if you are living in a scarcity mentality, then you're not living in the true promises of God, right? God, the universe, your higher power, your divine spirit, guidance, however you identify God, does not want you to struggle. There is no place that it is written that it is good to struggle and you should struggle and it's better to struggle 
because struggle is going to get you where you're going. And I explained to him, how can you be the representative of what God can do in the life of others? How can you be the representative or God in action? Because you guys know we are God in action, right? We are God's creation. We are his children. However you identify yourself as his child, his creation, connected to the divine, part of the Holy Spirit, however you identify yourself, you are connected to the great I am, Alpha and Omega, right? How can you say that you are connected and you are doing without? If you're living in lack in your mind, you're living in lack in your life. There's, there's no way around it. Nobody can tell me any different. I will tell people, I have told my clients, I've told my students, tell me about your life and I can tell you what you think. If you tell me how you're living, I can tell you why you're living that way. Everything that we have, everything that we desire to be, everything that comes forth in our life starts in our minds first. It is first a thought in our minds and then it becomes our reality. If we think that God doesn't want us to have this, that we should not have material wealth or we should not have nice bank accounts and nice things, then I can guarantee you that there's no manifestation in the world that's going to give it to you. There's absolutely nothing you can do on this planet that's going to bring you the things that you think God doesn't want you to have. Th that's just not possible. It's just not going to work like that. When you know that God truly wants to bless your life and that God truly wants nothing but the good of everything for you, you will immediately change your thoughts around what you should have and what you shouldn't have. Let me explain that a little bit. When you cannot see yourself financially prosperous, you can save all of your paychecks, all of your money, you can save all the money other people give you and you are not going to be financially prosperous. If you don't believe that you should be, this is all mindset work, y'all. It's all mindset work and connecting to the mind of God. There is no place that is written. If you can find it, please show it to me. But there is no place that it's written that God says, I want you to be broke. I want you to be struggling. If you believe that Jesus came and Jesus came to give us life, do you think that Jesus came to give you a poor life? Do you feel like the universe is not going to move on your behalf because you're supposed to be poor? Everything that I have ever read that I have ever learned about being prosperous is understanding a couple of things. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Number one, understanding who God is to you. Number two, understanding that you are prosperous, you're made in the image of God and God is prosperous. God is not broke. Number three, understanding that you have the power to change your outer circumstance by changing your inner dialogue and thoughts. It's conditioning your mind. It's not me conditioning your mind. It's not the person next door conditioning your mind. It's not the pastor conditioning your mind. It's you conditioning your mind. It's you studying and soaking up and figuring out everything you need to know about the move of God and the substance of source that is God in your life. The substance of God is never depleted. It's never depleted. 
So if the substance of God is never depleted, why should your wallet be? Why should your bank account be? Why should you be walking around here sad and thinking that you don't have enough to make it when you can simply say, God, look, I need a little help. Um, help me understand how to call down financial abundance and financial substance, unlimited financial substance from up in the spirit realms into my physical life. Because I do understand, God, that I am connected to you and who you are. I do understand, God, that you love me so much that you would not put me here to suffer. I do understand, God, who you are. And I understand who you are within me. And I trust that move. Y'all got to learn to speak up and have a conversation with God. You got to talk to God. We are so busy talking to people who we think can help us that we don't go talk to who can help us, right? God will put the teachings and the things that you need right in front of your face and we'll overlook it. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to invest in that. Oh, no, uh-uh, I can't do that. That's too much money. We do it all the time. When God is simply saying to you, listen, seek and you will find. Ask and it is given. Have the faith the size of a mustard seed and you don't have to do without a thing. When I changed my mind, I changed my life. And let me tell you something, because your girl's going to be honest. Y'all know I'm going to be honest, right? Your girl's going to tell you the truth. You know that, right? I am constantly renewing my mind. I am constantly renewing my mindset. I am constantly seeking God for understanding, deeper understanding deeper knowledge. You know what? There are some days I pray and this is what I say. Dear God, I need a financial miracle today. I know that you are the banker, the loan officer. I know that you even provide the unexpected checks in the mail and flows of abundance. I know that as your child, I am deserving of all of that. So I come to you today asking you for those miracles to happen for me. I thank you in advance. So be it, so it is. And I go on about my business expecting a miracle. And one always shows up. God is in the blessing business. He's not in the business of struggle. He's not in the business of lack and limitations. He wants you to have the desires of your heart. He wouldn't have told you if he didn't. And those desires include being financially prosperous. All right, guys, I just wanted to share that with y'all because it was on my mind. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm gonna share this because somebody may need to hear this tonight. Cause my friend did. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.